On this episode, we got the block back from the machine shop. It's freshly honed and decked, including the head. So now we're off to assemble it with the upgrades of ARP, even the valve train here. And of course, we'll also talk about the common misconception in match porting. Here, there was a question on the previous video. We also answered it. And there's another question. And also, we provide a detailed answer. But now, on this episode, we're going to clarify a lot of the other stuff that, that need clearing. Okay, and now here we're gonna assemble the engine. So yep, we're gonna finish this up. So yep, this one is for you. Let's go, let's go. Before we get into the part matching explanation that I'm gonna do because of comment on the previous video, let's finish this head because everything else is ready to be assembled. So now we're still finishing this. We did this halfway through on the previous video because this is his upgrade. The stock head that he had, we're not gonna use it. And so we decided to continue this now because it's almost done. And here we're polishing the bowl of the exhaust sorry of the intake it's 120 grit and you can notice we're spraying a lube that's a mix of a 50% ethyl alcohol and 50% soapy water you can use dishwashing soap that's fine this gives the finish that we need that's not too smooth not too shiny but it's textured really good and consistent as you can see the shine is kind of like a dull shine that's exactly how we want it we don't want it like super shiny or anything like that but just consistent this way any potential carbon that sticks to the walls of the exhaust is all going to be consistent not unequal or different from one another here you go and that's almost done now we're the last one here this is actually a bonus because marvin didn't ask for any discount so hey we decided to give him this free chamber cleanup and even of type r style porting and so because we know it's going to be a ra it's road race application the load is going to be extremely high so he can take advantage of the improved efficiency here that's because he didn't ask for a discount this is our way of thanking him for that he understood the work amount needed so hey he's good in my book all right here as you can see the chambers are all done and all clean actually the the bow exhaust bowl yep and now we actually we're gonna leave the exhaust uh the chambers as is but because this is gonna be a road race application there's gonna be extremely high load and heat generated on the uh, on the use of the head of the engine so we decided to actually clean this up this is gonna be a big help for him during application because it's extreme heat is uh, created during road race or during on track so this helps minimize you know being prone to pre-ignition is going to be performing really good here it is the chamber is all done the exhaust port is all cleaned up actually fully ported the intake is just type of r ported so yep and he decided to upgrade the crower valve spring and retainer so after cleaning up the head we installed it all here is already the valve spring and retainers from crower yes and super tech valve seals of course yep and before we continue, if you're liking this video, hit the like button. This helps the algorithm spread the video to a wider audience because there's more activity. So the more likes we get, the more activity it is. So of course, if you haven't subscribed, this way you're going to be part of our community. So whenever we have a new upload, you'll be notified right away. So hey, I'll see you, right? Okay. And now, okay, going back to the port matching. On the previous video, a fellow named, uh, where is it, right here? George Dreich 2662 said for the number of similar engine heads you all do, how about making an aluminum steel or steel templates installed dowels for considered port matching? Yes, the gasket we make does not need templates. That's what I said in the, my reply. And then he said this, fine that your gaskets align and all, but the manifolds need the dowel because they usually have slack and all that, right? And I understood what he was trying to say. You know, I really understood that because on the video vw air cooled stuff that's what happens and that's what's needed and my reply was for a 10 bolt it's not needed that's for b series and for a d series is just send seven bolts but it's still not enough to make it you know have a little play so here's an example here i get the head 
We have the OEM intake manifold, which is a PO8. You can see now, see, because there's a seven bolts, it doesn't really move left or right, and just a tiny bit up or down, like about half millimeter, that's it. So unless you're building the engine upside down, gravity will make sure it's like, you know, laying down on the bottom. So the important thing now is just aligning it properly here. Let me show you even with the Skunk 2, the aftermarket intake manifold. Let's, sh let's show you here. See, there's like even, even less play. So we gotta carefully, you know, install it, align it well. Just a little bit more here on this side. Yep, there. As you can see, it doesn't really move left or right. There's a bit like maybe up and down, barely half millimeter or not even. So there, see, just a little bit less than half millimeter. So if you're aligning it, if you got the gasket really well or really good and you know, you just you install it like right side up, it's still gonna lay down on the bottom. But like I said, the reason why I understood what he was saying is this, here on this VW stuff, this type one aftermarket Cadron manifold and my 040 head is not reported. I'll just clean it up. I've yet to finish it when I have a proper use for it. It's so my spare heads. Here, let me install it. Let's get the OEM intake manifold on the side here. Wait, hold on, let me get it. Here it is, the OEM dual port end casting. So now let's try it because the, the VW head has two bolts on the intake. So let's put this here. As you can see, it moves around a bit, actually a lot, like up and down, left, right, diagonally, everywhere, like by more than a millimeter. So this definitely needs a dowel. That's why I said I understood what he was trying to say, because there's only two bolts. You got to put a dowel there or a third bolt or a fourth bolt, then you won't need a dowel. Let's hear the MP Cadron intake manifold. Same thing. Look up, down, it moves around, left and right. So this definitely needs a dowel. But again, that's because there's only two bolts on the intake manifold. So you can actually drill it smaller, but then that'll be hard to install. So, yep, this is the reason why I'm explaining this is because a lot of people should, should better be aware. And I'm sure even George as aware of that, that, you know, not all gurus are helpful because some of them will just tell you a harder thing to do just to be pessimistic. Maybe that's because they don't want you to exceed what, what they've done or be better than them. We don't know, but the, that that's not me. I'm all about sharing because my reason is the more I share, the more reason I got to be better because I got to be better than, you know, than how I was before. So that's my thing. That's why I share. So, yep, let's continue now. Here is the all finished up head and you can see the chambers, we cleaned it up. We didn't really change much, just remove the sharp edges and those that's prone to pre-ignition. This still maintained 34.6 cc chamber. We double checked everything so it's all equal. Yep, even the shaving here, look, it's barely resurfaced. Yep, because we are up for efficiency here. And locally, people just go crazy about operating pistons without really thinking about efficiency. That's why there's a lot of trash motors here. Now the ARP rod bolts are gonna installed here on this picture. And then piston rings, yep. All right, now back to the block as it's ready to be to install the pistons. Yep, that's gonna be so good. All right, here we look at the underside. First, we're gonna install the crank, of course. We wipe this off with a paper towel or shop towel. We use shop towel this way it doesn't leave leave any lint or debris. Make sure all the saddles are clean. You fold it again, yes. Now it's all clean. Alright. Now it's ready for the bearings. Alright. Here's the main bearings. And then assembly lube, of course, the drank, and then the thrust washers, groove side out, of course, or remember that. Now we hand tight this, we put oil on the bolts. We hand tight this so that it's all snug and ready for the first step of a turking sequence. All right, here, okay. Now onto the first step, that's 18 feet pounds torque, all right. 
It's going to take a while because, you know, some of them are not, they are, they're all just hand tight, so they're all not equal. Yep, we get this all 18 feet pounds torque on all of them. This way, they're all flat and equally, you know, clamping on the mains. All right. Yes, there it is. Okay. Then three more after this. There. And on the other side. Last two. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. Now on to the second step, which is 38 feet pounds torque. Okay. It's louder now, you can see that. Now we're gonna speed this up to finish up the rest. Okay. Last three, last two. All right, there you go. Now let's turn the block. Oh, look at that. That spins like really good. Perfect clearances. Because we shot for 0 0.015 or 0 0.0015 on the main bearings because you know, we, we want this durable, like OEM. You can actually turn it with just your fingers. Okay, let's turn this now. Now let's be ready for the piston installation. All right. Let's line this. Okay. Yep. Okay, now on to the pistons. Put the assembly lube on the rod journals. Okay, number one. Yep. Turn it. And then the rod caps, of course. Yep. Okay, the next one, number two. People always wonder why I installed one, two, three, four. Well, because you all you you already have to turn the crank either way, so it doesn't make sense to install one and four and then two and three. I mean, you still gonna turn it, so it's not really much different from this. And I, of course, I, I I'm used to. I was putting the pistons in order like one, two, three, and four. So that's fine how it is for me. Yes, and you make sure assembly lube or ARP lube is well used on the rod balls to be able to get the accurate stretch numbers without over tightening it. Now I'll explain that a little bit more later. Let's finish this up. Okay, now we loosen it. Put the rod stretch gauge there. Okay. Now here, you can see it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's zeroed out because it's loose. So now, ERP suggests 0 0.055 or 0 0.0055. So we torque it to 20, between 26 to 28 feet pounds torque. If it lacks stretch, just re-lube it with the ERP lube. Don't go tighter by hand. So here, after 26 feet pounds torque, yep, it's perfect. Oh yeah. Now we go and do the rest of the rod bolts on this side here and then on this side here. And then after that, it's fully stretched up. It's all good. It's going to be perfect. It's ready to rock and roll. Yep, now it's all stretched and done. Now here, let's turn it. Oh, look at those honed bore finish. Oh, super nice. Oh yeah, you can hear the new piston ring scraping. That's pretty good, right? Now let's go back to the desk. Here's the OEM head gasket from Honda and the head is all ready. Now let's drop it in. Let's go, let's go. First, we get the dowels in and then of course with the oil drains on the block. We put three bond or Honda bond if you wish like, if you have here. Now we got the block. Hand tight all the studs, all oiled up good too. So that it's, you know, it's laid out flat nicely before the first step. All right, now here it is. First step is 22 feet pounds torque. So we're gonna go through that. This way the head is, you know, secured flat, secured flat onto the, onto the block. This way it does not warp or won't be prone to, for, to warping or blowing head gasket. Okay, we speed this up. It's 22 feet pounds torque for the first step. All right. Yep. 
that's it now on to the second step which is for the z6 head 53 feet pounds torque this is gonna be louder and quite long all right there you go and this one the next one yeah okay now we speed this up for the rest and once done, we double check it just to click. Just make sure everything is like one click there. Good. That's good. The next one. Yep. Okay. Yes. And then here. Okay. The last three after this. The last two. All right. So th there you go. All right, so it's all good now. So now the block is all closed up and finished. Yep, let me show you. Oh yeah, even the oil pan is done good. Yes, brand new water pump. And of course the oil pump, oil pump we opened it up to make sure the clearance is good. We basically blueprinted it, so now it's good. Ready for the top end, like the cans and all that. So here my colleague is, oh, sorry about the phone. My colleague is installing the rest. Got the rock arms good for the POA 20 cam lobes. Okay, so install the pla wait, no, you gotta chop the plastic first because it has aftermarket car cam gear. Marvin has a golden eagle cam gear, so it's good. There you go. And the gates belt, OEM replacement by gates. So, yep, here it is. All the, the sensors are installed for Marvin, all there at the back. Yes, this is really, really good now. So we're just waiting for the Skunk 2 intake manifold. As soon as it arrives, we're gonna port it and get it ready for this one. And of course, on the end screen, we'll have the continuation of the video, but once it's not ready, we'll have the first episode on the end screen. This way you can watch it all the way through until this one. But as soon as the next one is ready, you, of course, you can always click it here.